Hello everyone. So today I'm going to discuss uh, sudden painless loss of vision, its differentials and their management. So whenever a patient presents to you with loss of vision, you first need to ask whether it was sudden or it was gradual. Because uh, causes of sudden loss of vision are mostly emergencies which need immediate referral. But uh, causes of gradual loss of vision are things like cataract and age-related macular degeneration, which are non-emergency condition. So, for example, the patient has sudden loss of vision. The next thing to ascertain is whether it's painful or painless, because painful sudden loss of vision is because of things like acute angle closure glaucoma, okay? But in sudden painless loss of vision, there are uh, other things that are responsible, which we will now discuss. So the first differential here is C3. You can memorize it as C3. So, so which stands for uh, central retinal artery occlusion, central retinal vein occlusion, and cerebrovascular accident. So basically stroke. So C3 stands for central retinal artery occlusion, central retinal vein occlusion, and cerebrovascular accident. And there are two things in the vitreous. So vitreous detachment and vitreous hemorrhage, all right? Then we have optic neuritis, uh, retinal detachment and amaurosis fugix. So I want you to remember that optic neuritis can be both. Optic neuritis can be sometimes painful as well. So these patients can present with both sudden painful loss of vision or sudden painless loss of vision, okay? And when the loss of vision is painful in optic neuritis, the a uh, key thing that, you know, points toward optic neuritis is pain with eye movement, okay? Pain with eye movement, sudden loss of vision, and there is fading of colors, okay? Amaurosis fugix, it's not basically a diagnosis in itself, but it's like, uh, you know, it can occur in central retinal artery occlusion, it can occur in stroke even, um, it can occur in giant cell arthritis. So amaurosis fugix basically stands for transient loss of vision, which occur multiple times. So for example, the patient loses vision for 20 minutes and then it recovers. And then after a day or two, he again loses vision for like 15 minutes. So this is called amaurosis fugix and it is emergency because it can be an indication for an upcoming stroke. Okay. All right. So how to take history of loss of vision first of all you need to ask uh, which in which eye the patient is experiencing visual loss and what about the other eye then you should ask the patient to please describe the visual loss for you okay so uh, the patient will tell you uh, whatever the first golden minute they will tell you something about the visual loss and then you will ask about when did it happen so kind of odipara but it's a bit modified here so you will ask when did it happen and was it sudden or gradual and uh, did your vision come back or it was gone okay permanently and then if the vision was if there was transient loss of vision then you will ask how long did you lose your vision for is it partial or complete okay so uh, the partial visual loss like for example on the nasal side or on the temporal side or is it the vision is blurry faded or it's completely lost okay so uh, you should ask which part of the visual field is affected retinal uh sorry uh, temporal or nasal superior quadrant or inferior quadrant and then you should ask about anything else like any pain any redness any discharge any flashes so the patient might tell you i had flashing flashing lights before my eyes when I lost my vision and they might tell you that there were floaters, which are basically floaters. They see dark floating objects in their visual field and curtain falling on the vision. So basically the flashes, the floaters and curtain falling, they point, toward, uh, they point out toward retinal detachment, okay, or vitreous detachment. So these are basically uh, your pointers towards retinal detachment. I want you to remember that flashes, floaters and Curtain falling points to a retinal detachment. This is very important, okay? Of course, redness and pain and watery discharge will be in glaucoma, which is painful and uh, it's not the topic for today. I have already discussed glaucoma in the previous video. Now, pain, uh, 
pain can mean optic neuritis as well pain with eye movement fading of colors but optic neuritis can present as painless loss of vision with fading of colors as well any weakness in any part of your body so this is basically to rule out stroke okay please do not remember do, do not forget this question any weakness in any part of the body because this is basically a red flag all right, any trauma, any recent eye trauma, any um, fading of colors, which points toward optic neuritis. Trauma will be more in favor of retinal detachment. Any recent surgery on the eye. So if there is any recent surgery of the eye, it again points toward retinal detachment. And do you have any eye condition previously, like myopia, like short-sightedness or long-sightedness? Do you use any eyeglasses? Or lenses. So this there was basically your history of presenting illness. And then for the past history, you will ask, do you have any medical condition like diabetes mellitus, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol levels? These are relevant because if patient has uh, diabetes mellitus, high blood pressure, high cholesterol level, it predisposes the patient towards central retinal vein occlusion, which we will discuss in a a uh, little bit and um if the patient has any autoimmune condition then it predisposes the patient towards uh optic neuritis and also towards central retinal artery occlusion okay all right then you will ask about mephrosa so family history is important in cases of retinal detachment occupation is very important and driving asking about driving do you drive and how did you come to the hospital to, uh, to the clinic today or to the hospital today because you will uh Caution the patient against driving here as their vision is affected. So, so please do not forget this. This is also very important. And um, if you forget driving or occupation in a patient with visual loss, then you will not be a safe doctor. So please, please remember this. Okay, so lifestyle questions, cigarette smoking, alcohol, diet, exercise. Basically, the smoking part is important here. And then ideas, concerns, and expectation. And in examination, you will do the same. Um, there is the visual equity, the visual field. And then um, first of all, you will examine the eye in, you know, uh, in general, uh, naked eye examination of the eye, then visual equity, visual field, then um, eye movement, and also uh, fundoscopy. You will tell the patient that I will um, see the bake of your eye with a special instrument, which is called fundoscope, okay? I want you to remember the steps of fundoscopy really well because it can come up as a combined station as well where you have to take history and you have to examine the patient. So please watch the video of Geeky Medics for fundoscopy and follow it step by step, okay? All right, so how do we manage the patients? So retinal detachment. So basically a patient with retinal detachment will present with sudden loss of vision but uh, it may be complete and it may be over a part of their visual field like it may be on the temporal side it may be on the nasal side it may be on the upper quadrant or in the lower quadrant uh, so this patient will tell you that um, they have they felt like uh, there was flashing of lights before their eyes there were floaters in the visual field and then the visual was the visual loss was like a curtain okay so they felt like a curtain was falling down on their eye. This is the typical history of retinal detachment patients. How you will explain this to the patient? You will tell the patient that the thin layer, the, there is a thin layer at the back of your eye called retina, which is responsible for vision. It has become loose and this condition is called retinal detachment. Now, why this has occurred? So there might be some risk factors in the history. So these are some of the risk factors you need to look out for them in the history. The patient may be short-sighted, that is myopic, okay? The patient might be wearing eyeglasses and then you should ask that I see that you, I can see that you are wearing eyeglasses. So can you please tell me if you have any eye condition, okay? Uh, ask about recent eye surgeries. So basically recent eye surgeries predisposed to retinal detachment, especially the cataract surgery. Any recent eye injury, any direct blow to, to the eye and family history of retinal detachment, although these... Uh, these cases are rare. And then you will examine. So when you examine the patient, how will the retinal detachment appear? Let me show you. Retinal detachment will appear like this. This is basically the normal part of the retina. As you can see, it has bright color. And here you can see that the color has faded. Okay, And you can see kind of bulging. This spot is kind of bulging. So this is basically the detached part of the retina. So whenever, because the retina basically detach from the its blood supply, okay, from the uveal tract. So this part is, if you can see, kind of faded because it's not receiving its blood supply. And this is more bright, brighter in color. 
So this is the typical appearance of retinal detachment that you will see on fundoscopy. Okay, so what do we do with these patients? So if these patients present to the GP clinic, we will refer, refer them immediately to the hospital, okay? And we will uh, send them by an ambulance if they are alone, um, by hospital transport if they are alone. And uh, if they come with someone else who can drive them, then but we, then we will tell them to go to the hospital. But we will advise them not to drive and the referral must be immediate. You should make sure that the patient understand that it is an emergency, okay? Because uh, there's a better chance of regaining their vision um, if they go sooner to the hospital, okay? So you must make sure that the patient understand the urgency of the situation. And you should explain to them that in the hospital, they will be examined by the eye specialist and they will perform a, uh, some surgical procedure to reattach the retina back to, back to its original position. If they're present in the ER, then you will admit them. You will do routine bloods and you will prepare them for surgery and you'll explain it to them. The eye specialist will do the surgery, reattaching the retina back to its original position. Okay, so optic neuritis. Optic neuritis basically present with uh, fading of colors. So it's not like complete visual loss. And there may be, they may tell you that there's some weakness in some muscles of the body because optic neuritis most frequently present in patient with MS, okay? But a typical patient of optic neuritis will have fading of color and pain on eye movement. So it can be painful. I want you to remember that, okay? Uh, how would you explain it to the patient? So you'll tell the patient that the nerve from the eye to the brain has become inflamed and this condition is called as optic neuritis, okay? So it's simple, nerve from the eye to the brain has become inflamed. Uh, what we are going to do about them? We are going to refer them to the ophthalmologist immediately, okay? And we'll tell them that the ophthalmologist will examine you further. They might do an, uh, a scan, which is called MRI scan of your brain and spinal cord. Okay, and they will give steroid, steroid medication to reduce the inflammation of the nerve. We will also arrange a referral to the neurology as well to look for the underlying MS. Okay, but the referral to the neurology will not be uh, emergency referral. It will be routine referral. Okay, uh, optic neuritis, there is no picture for optic neuritis because optic neuritis on fundoscopy will appear normal because on fundoscopy, you can only see as far as up to the retina. You cannot see the optic nerve, okay? So uh, optic neuritis will appear normal. There are basically different types of optic neuritis, which I don't want um, you to worry about. Like it can be involving the head of the optic nerve, in which case you can see an inflammation but please don't worry about it, okay? For your purposes, fundoscopy is normal. All right. Um, you need to safeguard them about driving and you need to tell them that if you have any muscle pain, any weakness or problem in controlling urine uh, while you're waiting for your neurology uh, referral, then please come back because it can mean that um, it can it can point toward, toward it can point out toward um, a more severe condition. Now, central retinal artery occlusion and central retinal vein occlusion, they are kind of low yield, and high, I highly doubt that they can be used for, you know, exam purposes, because uh, in these cases, there isn't much that can be done about, you know, for, for the sake of treatment, but just for the sake of completion, I will discuss them. Uh, so in case you are prepared, if they ever come in the exam. Okay, so central retinal artery occlusion, you will explain to the patient that there is blockage in the main blood vessel that is supplying the eye. Of course, it is an emergency. And why does it happen? It happens in autoimmune conditions like giant cell arthritis and coagulopathies. Um, so autoimmune condition like giant cell arthritis, I've already discussed. So basically, in why we are worried in patient with uh, GCA because we are worried about these patients developing um, these patients developing the uh, central retinal artery occlusion. Okay, so how does central, uh, central retinal artery occlusion appears on the fundoscopy? So it looks like this on fundoscopy. This is called as cherry dot cherry spot appearance of the retina. Uh, okay. 
so basically in central central retinal artery occlusion the main blood vessel is blocked so that's why the whole of the retina the whole of the retina it appears pale while the macula which is the central spot of the retina it has a different blood supply okay it's not supplied by the central retinal artery so so the so this part which is vascular it appears red whereas the rest of the retina appears pale this is called as sherry spot appearance of the retina so this is basically the typical appearance of uh, central retinal artery occlusion i'm mixing the pores because it's really red here and i'm sleepy okay um central retinal vein occlusion so central retinal vein occlusion uh, how you will explain it to the patient will tell the patient that it is because of the blockage of vein that drain blood from your eye and it has resulted in uh, swelling of the tissue at the back of your eye okay so basically in crvo or central retinal vein occlusion central retinal vein is blocked and it can't drain the blood from the retina and as a result of this the retina become edematous and there is a loss of vision not only does the retina become edematous but there is bursting of small small veins um, um supplying draining the retina and it appears a small hemorrhages on the surface of retina it's also an emergency condition and um, why does this happen? So it's basically because of metabolic syndrome. So the patient, the typical patient of central retinal vein occlusion is obese and they might have diabetes mellitus, hypertension, heart disease and high cholesterol level. Okay, one or more of these conditions. And these patients are usually over 60. So it's more common in older patients. Now, what we are going to do about this, we are going to obviously refer them immediately to the hospital. And uh, so what uh, they will do in the hospital, they will give some anti-VEGF injections. So no need to tell the patient about anti-VEGF. Just tell them that they will give some injection to the eye to reduce the swelling of the tissue at the back of their uh, at the back of your eye. This is how retina appears on fundoscopy in central retinal vein occlusion. So there is basically... Um, it's kind of swollen, which you can't appreciate by just looking at this picture because it's not 3D. But you can obviously see these hemorrhages all over the retina, these red hemorrhages. So this is the typical appearance of central retinal vein occlusion. Okay, uh, I forgot to tell you what the specialist will do in central retinal artery occlusion. So the in case of central retinal artery occlusion, there's unfortunately nothing much can be done here that can reverse the vision. Like no treatment has uh, any proven efficacy, but specialists can try from eye massage to dislodge the clot that is blocking the central retinal artery. And um, they can also try to lower the intraocular pressure and hoping that the um, clot will be dislodged by doing so. And they can give some oxygen therapy, but uh, none of them has any proven benefit in reversing the visual loss. So this was all about sudden painless loss of vision. The basic high yield topics here are retinal detachment and optic neuritis. And I have told you about CRVO and CRAO for completion sake. So please keep them in mind as well in case they come in the exam so you are prepared for it. Um, so this was all about uh, sudden painless loss of vision. And... Um, I will see you uh, soon in the next video, which will be about um, gradual loss of vision. Okay.